Welcome back to Business This Week. And of course, now we get into our segment that we call People, Power and Politics. And you know how Business This Week does. What we do is we bring you the biggest voices and the biggest uh, news of the week. And uh, Smoo Sisoleo, better known as DJ Smoo, uh, is in studio. And we are going to be talking about more fire, for <laughs> one. But we're also going to be talking about all things that pertain to retail and the kind of challenges uh, that uh, black entrepreneurs have. But they David and I, for once, are actually not going to be doing the work today. We said to you earlier this week, uh, using the hashtag AskSmoo, you mm. can ask any question that you want uh, to DJ Smoo. So we'll, we'll sneak so, in maybe here and there. And we got a lot of those. And so we're going to uh, do you justice and make sure that you lead this conversation. But here's one thing I did earlier today, because everybody's talking about this Mo Fire, and I'll admit, I'd never seen Mo Fire. What is Mo Fire? So it's this little thing over here, mm -hmm. okay? Which Looks I'm like calling back label. No? Oh, Ooh, I'll tell you. That's I'll tell a nice you now. sound. That's a mm -hmm. nice sound. Mm -hmm. When you open it, it says Tiko. Tiko is also for um, <laughs> God given. Right. When you so open just it. open it and Do see if it says how we, we didn't ask him to participate, but, but he's, he's a star. Already there. We, so he comes in. Yeah. So, we, you know, we just have a taste. We'll bring him in when okay. we're ready. Hey? Let's <laughs> have a taste of You can have a taste of mine. What do you think? <laughs> Mia, well, let's I go actually clap. need this, oh, okay. to be honest. So while, while they were having their tickle drinks uh, <laughs> being opened, what I did is I decided that I was going to actually go to Santon, the richest square mile in Africa, mm. and look and see if any of these retailers were actually stocking more fire. So if Smooth comes back to us and says, you know, black entrepreneurs are being locked out, then we'd know whether it's true or not. So okay. look what I found. I found Killer. Yep. But I didn't find any more fire. Mm. And I think this was at one of the garages. And then I went into pick and pay. Yeah. And I went to look for more fire. And I didn't find any more fire. Uh, and then I went to an engine garage. Huh? And that's me looking through. And I didn't find any more fire. <laughs> and I think the final one was, uh, I think that was a checkers and there was no more fire there. So, so what, what point are we making here? So the point we're making here, and I think this is important, is to get the nuts and bolts of the story from school. What is more fire? What what is behind the brand? How many of these are you churning out on a weekly basis? How big is your market? And where do we find it before we get to the question? Or have we got the entire stock here in the studio? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to come through and speak about our brand new project. It's called More Fire. You know, we, we believe um, that badge over there is a badge of honor because mm. we believe young people of 1976 had a burning desire to achieve whatever they wanted to achieve with just stones and, you know, uh, going up against cops with guns and tear gases and so forth. So for us, we, we honor them because we're facing a different struggle, with it, which is the economic struggle. So this was put together by eight entrepreneurs, um, uh, a legal guy, a lawyer, a chemical engineer by profession who did the formula myself who's a marketer and, and, and a and master student um, and a couple of strategists and other marketers and, and so forth so we came together to create this first 100% um, black owned energy drink in the market because we saw that all the other energy drinks that are out there they're all from overseas so all this money is churned out to international um, countries and we look at what they sponsor or where they spend their money on back into these communities I think they focus on other things which are extreme sports and so forth mm. now being credible ourselves through our foundation ha of having done work with schools over the past eight nine years we felt instead of us having to ask for scholarships and bursaries from um, you know willing donors every year why don't we have a product that is stylish that is cool that is you know in line with how people are living and and just get people to just switch from buying their regular drinks to try it out if mm -hmm. they actually think it's nice they must just continue with it and then a portion of it goes into it well towards we did education. ask people which is their favorite energy drink so we'll get to that a little bit later but let's get to those questions uh, from uh, social media, in particular uh, from the Twitter sphere. Here's a question that comes from Nogzola Ndwandu She's Nogzola says, is DJ Smoo considering getting more fire listed on the JSC as one of its growth objectives uh, as per the brand? I, I think th a very good question. It's a very good question. I think every entrepreneur, when they're starting, they want to build mm. a global business. And that's basically what we're trying to do. But the interesting thing is that we're experiencing a lot of challenges. And because I'm in the public eye, a lot of our challenges are going to be spewed out there into the public, which is a beautiful thing because it's starts educating younger people about entrepreneurship. Mm. Mia, let's, take, let's have you taking our second tweet. Uh, let's pull out that tweet uh, so that uh, Mia can read it out and see. Yes, yeah, so what after... What's next? Oh, what's next after um, or for Mo Fire? 
Africa, the world? Mm. I think we want to make it a global brand because we're a beverages company. So at a later stage, our growth strategy, we want to move into other products. But the challenges that we're facing right now is making it onto major retail. Just like you went on a more fire hunt, you didn't yeah. find it mm. anywhere. Mm. It's been difficult for us. We sat down with um, a couple of uh, companies, which I won't mention their names right now. And it's the pro the processes have been very um What's the biggest difficult. pushback that you're getting at that's not allowing you to access the retail chain? I think for me, there isn't a biggest pushback. It's, it's, uh, some of the processes are longer. They require you to put in a certain amount of money up front, which you don't have. I don't have a million rands in cash right now. Well, that doesn't that come back to the listing that we're talking about, uh, Clive? I mm. mean, yeah. companies list uh, to raise capital in order to do things. Yes. <laughs> you need capital to raise capital, and that's the thing, and I think he's spot on there. I think but she's talking about listing on the shelves, right? No, but so later then, uh, we're talking about the JSE. Yes, yes yeah. 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 but yeah, you are right. Now we're talking about being visible on the on, shelves on the in, shelves, in yeah. the terms of yeah. breaking into that chain. Because that's that's basically how we're going to be able to yeah. print money with this thing and succeed. But the fact that we are actually being closed out on that front, we're not stopping and just waiting for a good Samaritan. We are in the townships. That's the reason why it's a faster growing energy drink brand. If you go hashtag more fire on any social media platform, you'll see young people, trendy people, superstars, celebrities, politicians, old magogos, mamas. We it had is the president, the I think, earlier brand. this week uh, yeah. with a can of more fire in his hand. Who's that? The, the president? The state president. Yeah, because yeah. we had to go to the black industrialist in there because we believe we are industrialists. Right. We don't have our own manufacturing plant right now we've got the formula which is ours we painted it and we own we also have the brand trademarked and we we basically are entrepreneurs that want to eventually mm. own the entire okay. value chain. well let's have a look uh, at the next uh, tweet there that we've uh, been sent by been hundreds of them uh, coming in uh, if I start drinking my fire will I be exempt from <laughs> sitting Epic back seat in <laughs> taxi. So at the back seat in the taxi. <laughs> I, I, I got a, I got a. And you know what that means. I yeah, mean, do you yeah. know? Uh, does this make <laughs> yeah, me successful and worry. that kind of thing? It does have the kick because the interesting thing is somebody tweeted something during the week and said um, a lady was seen flying after drinking more. Ah, <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. So let's get Clive uh, getting us our next uh, our next question. Let's pull that up and let's see uh, what that uh, comes up as. How old were you when you became a millionaire? Mm. It's got an interesting question. That's a loaded question. It's a it loaded is. question. I believe I'm wealthy. And the reason I believe I'm wealthy is because of the work that I do. I think I'm an asset to my community based on the track record of the work I've done in assisting other people's lives, yeah. building other entrepreneurs or taking kids to school and educating kids. But as far as having a million in their pocket, no, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think... Um, when I felt that I'd reached the stage where I was a little bit comfortable in my life is, uh, is around mid-20s, around 25, 26. Which is you, very yeah. good. But the challenges of uh, entrepreneurs, the regulations, for example, you not being able to penetrate the market as much as you would want, the volumes. It's the same as the thing that small entrepreneurs in the financial industry, in any other sector, find it difficult to enter because the conglomerates are already there. They're controlling the... Yeah. the, 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 the I, I just want to ask Mia something. Let's be yeah. honest here. Had you heard of Mafia before this conversation? <laughs> I actually saw the tweet about the women flying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sh shows how and you said, I want to do that. <laughs> so, that. Why did you think I started drinking yeah. this so quickly? <laughs> let's pull up another question. I don't want to get in trouble with our viewers, so let's see if we've got another one. Um, this one says, I want to sell Mafia uh, at all corners of South Africa. Who do I order from, I think, yeah. is the In the other words, I want to be a distributor. Yes. yes. That's, that's who we have currently who's taking this drink everywhere. We've got 33 distributors nationwide mm -hmm. that are taking these drinks out, and we're looking for more. And an interesting thing about our model is that we don't give you stock on consignment. you got to show us your commitment by buying the stock at a good cost price, and then you go out there, but we kept the price. But you, we give you enough chance to be able to play around, have good mm -hmm. margins to make money for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can get in touch with us on info at morphyenergy.com. That's info at morefireenergy.com. Mm -hmm. So yes. I want to go back to the uh, when you became a millionaire. And, and I'm, just, I'm just being an ordinary consumer now, an ordinary South African. I heard you were a billionaire. Uh, <laughs> it's an interesting thing when you say that because it, it certainly is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more than a billionaire, you know. 
I, I've just explained to you because of being an asset to my communities mm. out there and not only the physical people that I've, I've helped you know to help change their lives but the consistent people that get to see my story and they're inspired and those are millions of South Africans so you can't put value to that so that's mm. why I really believe that uh, when, I, when I go away from this earth that's what's going to remain behind you can't say Mandela was, Mandela was a trillionaire or a billionaire but the significance of what he left behind his legacy that's the reason why I, I say like that methodology I'm, I like that approach <laughs> I'm a gazillionaire so <laughs> I I am an asset and an asset and an asset. And whatever you got, you can't take it with you at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Let, guys, I, I always never want to leave out the Facebookers from the conversation. So I posted on my Facebook page, I said, we're getting to the bottom of this more fire drama with Here's DJ Spoo on business uh, this week. Uh, what would you like me to ask him? And Sandy Lengwabi says, how many units are you turning in a week? It's, a, it's an interesting question. We're at the SABS earlier today, offices in Pretoria, we were just ch chatting about about um, the brand and just its growth and so forth and other business things. And they were asking us, but guys, just this week alone, forget about how long you've been selling more fire. Mm -hmm. This week alone, how many drinks have you sold? We sold out. Wow. Uh, what I want to ask you is, uh, you've got a great outfit for radio this evening. Uh, <laughs> wear it for TV as well. When you grow up, you're going to get long pants, obviously. But radio, television. Uh, which was the first? Which do you like the most? And I mean, you like being a showman, obviously. No, sir. I mean, I don't really love being a showman. I'm an entrepreneur, which so happens that I, I'm actually talented in entertaining people. And I obviously, uh, you know, I have a lot of love for my community where I come from. That's the reason why you'll understand later why I'm dressed like this. It's a Friday. He's just jealous. But I'll tell you why. So we've been trying to get him into some sort of Scotani mode. Yeah. We've succeeded with the, with, yeah, the, we got with, with the floral, with the floral, with the floral trimming. The best yeah. with the first thing. And he that. always wants to show them off. Uh, I always want to show them. I won't do it for both. But there we are. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I've, I've okay. been working okay. on it. I've yeah. been working on it. But uh, let's take another Facebook uh, and see if we can get a question there. Uh, Sananu Kofi Apatu, who actually is a friend of mine in South Korea, says, why is he lying about Forbes? <laughs> we all know he did it himself. Nozi Pombandra, be hard on that man. So that's uh, Sinanu. That's Sinanu being hard on you. How, how do you respond to him? Uh, people have been harsher towards me. But I think the beautiful thing, Forbes.com overseas really did an article on three uh, beverages that are the fastest growing um, in this continent, in Africa. So we are acknowledged by Forbes.com, which is obviously a parent company to Forbes Africa. When I shared the link and people started reading it, they congratulated me. And they I started doing all sorts of different images. One of the images ah. was the one, you know, actually was beautifully done. It's where people, where, where people, it's <laughs> not here, yeah. People really believed it was a cover coming. And, yes. and I do know that you guys here at your Forbes Africa, CNBC <laughs> Forbes Africa offices, you started getting a whole lot of demand, people waiting for that issue. Because they thought Smoo was going to be on the and cover. And there wasn't a, an actual <laughs> cover. But, uh, but no, I didn't, I didn't do the cover, no, I didn't. <laughs> Well, we've got another one, Lindani Mbali Mnyandu. She's actually the general manager at Nando's South Africa and uh, for marketing, more specific, so all of those naughty Nando's ads. Yep. So Lindani says, uh, that will be interesting in response to the fact that we're having you on the show. She, she says, I'd like to know what's in it, nutritionals, how does it differ from the other energy yeah, products? And I think a backup to that question, sugar has become the new no-no. Is there a lot of sugar in it? Very good question. Actually, I just want to say, um, you asked us a very good question. Now, for... For, for a lot of people that have been asking us about sugar-free or the healthier version, when is it coming? We definitely are working on it to release it towards the, the end of the year. So there but, is sugar in this one? But this one, there's definitely yeah. sugar. There's sugar in it, there is caffeine in it, there's this disclaimer at the back that it's not recommended for children, it's not going to re recommend it for lactating uh, women, for pregnant women, and so forth. Uh -huh. So there's disclaimers at the back. Mm. But it's just like any other energy drink, we're just a little bit more on the vitamin B6. Yeah. Mm. And uh, it's, uh, it's actually very best, uh, nicely tasting, doesn't have an aftertaste. It's a bit fruity. No, um, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm actually having a, a lot of fun enjoying my, <laughs> my mofire here. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely going to get my weekend off to a good start. You, you should have it when it's cold. I mean, I don't know if you've had fire cold. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be prepared to give it up uh, to a big brand that comes in and says, we like what uh, you're doing, but we want to buy it from you? 
We, we do acknowledge that, that mm, that's going to happen. Let me not say that, that, that might. That's going to happen in the future. SAB, Coca-Cola, that kind of you know, we're gonna have, have to, We're going to have to have a chat because, you know, certain proceeds go towards education. So if the deal that we might do at a later stage when we have consulted with the partners and we feel maybe it's the right time to let go of a certain stake, we're going to have to lock them into a deal where they're going to have to be forced to build a couple of schools in the country to continue with that project and also to give us what we feel at the time the brand is worth, um, brand equity, future sales, and whatever we might be able to agree upon with my business partners. Mm -hmm. But that's basically where it's headed. So not a, not a no. By no I'm saying that's basically where it's headed because yeah. there's no any other way that no one is uh, that anyone is going to stop the success of this thing. Mm -hmm. That's the only way they're going to have to stop it. Mm -hmm. So let's take the last one. This is quite a long one. This comes from Bali Lamine. In Bali is in Durban. She says, besides making money, what inspired Mo Fire? Who is uh, his target consumer? And how is uh, the product better than a Red Bull? How will this initiative bring back to the people of South Africa? Is the Forbes saga way of getting more publicity for his product <laughs> as he's been doing so at the awards, on radio, etc., etc.? Loaded, loaded question. I think we've answered some of it, but let's yes. take on some of those elements that haven't been spoken about. I think a beautiful thing is just the, the Red Bull story, how it started from Austria. That is extremely an inspiring story. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they don't own their own plants, but they own the IP, the formula, and the brand, and how they've been able to grow it worldwide, that's such an inspirational story for young businesses like ourselves. Red Bull inspires us. Coca-Cola inspires us. And that's the reason why we have to take it to international level, our drink. How it differs from other products is that it's ours. It's our own. And it's going to contribute towards education. It inspires entrepreneurs. I've just told you we've got 33 entrepreneurs that are responsible for getting this drink out there in the different townships right now. And I've just given uh, an information on how other potential young entrepreneurs can make money out of this drink. So it's our own. It's a drink that's got endless opportunities for everyone. Marketing companies have been contacting us, wanting to do some work with us, activation companies, PR companies. So there's an opportunity. It's ours. It's not mm. mine. It's all ours. Yeah. And of course, uh, at CNBC Africa, we did also do a little bit of more uh, research. We went out and we asked people what their favorite energy drink is. And we actually got some responses. Uh, here's uh, some of them. So Saki uh, says, hashtag more fire. I think Saki just knew that, uh, uh, you know, Spoo was going to be here. Uh, and then uh, M Sugar says, look as a boost. I think those those orange ones. Ah, I think I've ah, seen those. This is, this is like now. Medicine. Yeah. Rico's water. This is very imaginative, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, think, uh, I think we might just have, uh, those are the final ones. But let me ask, you did mention why you were dressed like this. I'm not saying you shouldn't dress like this. You can do what you like. <laughs> but you did say you were going to explain why. Um, in South Africa, it's our culture that you, you can, on a Friday, you can loosen up a little yeah. bit. How you loosen up, that's totally up to you. You can wear sportswear. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah, you can take off his tie. You can wear sh just like yeah, yourself. Well, you're not wearing a tie. You're not wearing a suit. Yeah, but you're still, you're still semi-casual, which you are allowed to. Uh, if I have to just uh, let you know, you probably don't know. I have you know, been uh, uh, um, acknowledged by GQ as the best dressed man in the country. <laughs> so am I, I, do yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> I do know a thing or two about fashion. <laughs> Now, before we wrap, I promised David that I was going to get you to teach him how to say hoi hoi. And, and also maybe just explain to him what it means. <laughs> yes. And then I know Clive doesn't know how to say hoi hoi either. What? And so oh, maybe we can have a, a, a swoon leading it. Let and let's see if you guys can. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. There's a way in which you say it, right? Yeah. You don't just say hoi hoi or hoi hoi. Hoi hoi. Oi, oi. <laughs> oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, uh, Clive, what you Oi, oi. Mia? Yeah, that's close. Uh, oi, oi. Mia? Oi, oi. Oh, <laughs> okay, all together. Oi, oi. oi. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. Maybe there's a job for us. Uh, <laughs> maybe there's a job for me here on this platform. Oh, no. you, never, you never know. Oh, what a fantastic conversation. Uh, we've got one more tweet that's coming through. Producer saying, Nozzy, take the tweet. It says, uh, at CNBC Africa, at DJ Spoo, at The Real Nozzy, what's next on the entrepreneurial table for you, DJ Spoo? Now everybody is on uh, the watch and they want to know from here on where to. I'm, I'm learning a lot of um, things regarding the, the processes at the SABS, how they approve products and how do they get you eligible for the market. And I'm working on my own toilet paper brand, which is called Ndofo Ndofo, which means soft. I'm working on my own bread. Ndofo Ndofo. Ndofo Ndofo. In the Tambi, in the Not newspaper. Um, no, aye, no, aye, no, aye. no, 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 no. We're working on a double plan. Double plan. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got a, I've got my own um, 
trademark brand called Nzo. Nzo now is a slang, is a township slang in South African black communities for bread. Mm. Uh. So, so I'm, I'm currently busy with the, the SABS processes and negotiating with different bakeries and so forth. But it'll be easier as soon as this succeeds and it makes mm -hmm. it onto all the shelves yeah. that all my other products can then follow suit. Oh. So it's Mo Fire, it's Nzo, it's Ntofo Ntofo. Uh, that's all that uh, Spusi Soliapo is bringing to the market and maybe much, much more. We even spoke about a possible listing, a possible buyout from one of the big giants, Coca-Cola or anybody else who's looking. One thing is clear that uh, this is the time for black entrepreneurs and Spusi Soliapo is certainly uh, and living up to it that. It sounds like it could be a black industrialist because yep. that's the new phrase that's on the conversation this week. Well, uh, Sibu uh, Sisu Leope, and uh, that's DJ Spu, and Clive Ramatibela Smith is going to, <laughs> they're both going to leave us now. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank After you. this, we're going to bring you, we had quite a lot of social media already, but we're going to have more analysis of the social media space right after this. Don't go away.